point, like, why wouldn't it? I mean, but they've said it took his time considering yeah, Sendo, what he was going to go. Sendo's been playing it. Sendo's been playing it. I haven't, I haven't seen him use it. Like, he, he'll practice it, and then I don't see him use him in tournament that much, but we'll see if he uh, he brings it to the table, because that's something I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord knows Sunday was taking his time and deciding, oh, what weapon should I pick? And uh, yeah. <laughs> would not be surprised to see that one come out. It's like it's actually going to be a Slosher Deco here. And uh, so we have we do have Stingrays from both teams, uh, as expected. Double Slosher Deco coming out of Team Olive, which is pretty interesting. And then we have a, a more of a variety comp with two Stingrays coming from uh, Gakagu. Yeah, and we see on the front lines here, at least Urza is going to be taken down. We see Niall on the top of the map and going to be pushing up towards the right side of the map, seeing what he can get with that blaster of his. Ooh, another down from Team Olive. Uh, in the meantime, though, yep, able to take the lead for now. Stingray coming on top of the zone. But yeah, as you said, a couple going down for Olive, meaning that Akatsuki is going to be able to take control here before Niall's getting pushed up on a little bit here towards the middle of the map, forced to use Splashdown defensively. But still, even then, like they're able to get control of zone and keep it, and they've been able to lock out Team Olive for the most part here. Pokefan does go down. Yeah, this is a 2v2 situation right now, and now we see a scramble for the zone. Olive does get the penalty. We'll see if they're able to kind of stay alive here. Serenity being forced to back up. Sword and Urza are staying alive, so it looks like this is going to be map control for Team Olive right now as the other Olive members are starting to respawn, control the other side of the map. And now we see Gakagu getting ready to go for some kind of counter push. I think I see a Stingray jumping back, and they're starting to go towards the center of the map. Yeah, and Soren here. Oh, looked like he was going to be able to help 2v1 on a player, but does get taken down by Rachel to the left of him. Looks like they will be able to uh, finally take the lead just by a hair for now. Or sorry, Team Olive, uh, as we get Soren here recovering to the middle of the map here. And just looking at the map. Can't really player. stop the base from being taken. Urza died in the zone. Uh, you know, Soren goes down as well. And a little bit of an unfortunate play right there because Pokefan did jump out from that Stingray in order to counter ray. But by the time she got her Stingray out, members of Team Olive had died. So her Stingray really wasn't able to contribute towards right. any in the middle of the map. Kind of uh, led to a loss in map control. And now Gakagu is back in control of the zone. Yeah, and it looks like they're holding on to it, but just by a hair here, there's always a consistent line of pressure coming in from Olive and their front line. And sure, they're able to get the lead for now, but the baller's coming in. Senu's on top of... Oh, but he does get taken down on bridge there. And they do have two members to kind of push towards the middle here, but Team oh, Olive will wipe. not be able to get control of it. In fact, get completely full wiped there. What went wrong there? Uh, it was kind of just came down to the scramble right there. The, it, it, we had a situation for about like 20 seconds where all four members of both teams were kind of able to get something going, but it just ended up that Olive got out Slade right there, and the, the loss of numbers just started to tick down and down. Olive is going for their very last desperate try to control nice. So they do get it, so this is going to add the penalty they need to be able to, to win the game. Now they are, it is a 1v2 situation right now. Soren by himself in the zone being shot at from the two members of Kagu, and he's, they're probably going to lose the zone here, but this is what Olive needed to stay in this game. They're going to have to revamp their forces, get map control, and then go for an actual hold instead of that desperate kind of like stop the timer at the last second kind of push. Yeah, no, that definitely could use less of that going into this. Stingray is going to go out, and Urza and Sindu are going to stick to each other towards the middle of the map. Meanwhile, Soren calls over maybe for some help while Urza goes in to all of the members on top of zones. They're struggling with staying alive, but will be able to get rid of Kirito on the middle of the zone. 3v2 enabled here, and finally getting some semblance of control here as it looks like Akatsuki will jump back to base with the Stingray. All right, Sendow there going to use his ball on the enemy plat, and that, that Stingray is active, but once again, this is kind of a situation where the Stingray wasn't quite in tune to uh, help teammates get a, uh, some kills. Now, one member of Team Olive goes down, two members of Team Olive go down. We have uh, Pokefan using her Stingray, and then, oh, it ends up happening again, where, uh, unfortunately, Pokefan's Stingray isn't really able to help her teammates because her teammates are dead, and that's going to be more zone control for uh, Gakagu. Now it's up to Olive to, uh, you know, try this again and make that zone control actually hold and really get some kills because that's what they're having trouble with right now. Rachel coming with the splash down from the super jump. Doesn't land onto anyone, though. Was tempted to kind of use that and see if that ended up working out. But with 20 or so points, squid points left to go in the zone, Soren's going to go on in with the Stingray to boot with it. Does get control of it. Yeah, no, this is the Stingray that we were taught, that we wanted to see from Pokefan right there to help out oh. Soren get those kills. And really good job from Soren to get them. Seno gets that? another kill. Karita going down. So this is basically one of the first uh, situations where Olive has more or less gotten a full wipe. Serenity is, is going to need to jump out with that Stingray. He does, so now we're in a situation where Olive is in control of the zone. There's a minute left. They need to make at least one hold here uh, without dying too much. Urza goes down. Some members of Gakago are starting to push in the zone. This is up to Olive to hold the zone for the next 20 seconds. Yeah, Niall and Kirito here pushing in from the right side and waiting for some teammates to maybe help them out. Doesn't look like the most opportunistic way of going in. Niall approaches from the bridge, hops on down with the splashdown, does get a push Urza. from the bridge. Urza, are you able to come up clutch? The answer is no. 
Akatsuki Baller. goes in. Baller. No one's gonna paint zone from Team Olive here. This might be big. This might be big, but will it be in time? There's a one point differentiator sit sitting between the two teams, and Akatsuki <gasps> gets in control in just the right second here. Nile, a huge part of that offensive effort to get control of zone. Will he get control of Urza at least? No, is the answer for now. But the, it doesn't matter either way. Akatsuki, with 10 seconds left to go, gets control and stacks a massive penalty. Urza playing out of his mind in the last few seconds of the, or the last few uh, moments of this game, but is it going to be enough? Olive's going to need to control his own one second. They get it! They're now into an overtime push. Oh. Olive has a huge timer to tick down from this. Rachel splashing down in zone. Team Mahler is going to team shot that and kill another member of Gakago. Oh my. They need to hold the zone for another 25 seconds. Here we go again. Uh, we do see Kirito pushing from the left side, but will he wait for another teammate to come? There is 20 points of penalty worth to be able to wait and delay and wait for your teammates to come in. Don't but the call now. to go there in is now. Up. They're going to kill yeah. the double zone, though. That's massive. Sword has to come up huge here. He won't be able Good to do enough. that without trading. And that's going to be the game. My goodness. Wow, what a back and forth final en ending of the game. That, that, I felt like overtime lasted for like two minutes. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe that, you know, that game really looked like Team Olive was struggling for maybe the first, like, three minutes of the game when they they finally stood. Basically, their problem was that they were getting outslayed, right? Yeah. And, and once they started, you know, getting those kills, feeling more comfortable, that's when they started to get the zone control. And I feel like if that had been their play from the beginning of that game, mm -hmm. it could have been a different story. So we'll see if they, you know, they can keep up that ability to kill going into this next map of a... Uh, uh, pump it, uh, humpback tower control, but but my God, that was such an intense back and forth that that I, I, Olive was so close to winning that game so many times. Yeah, if anything, that's a good sign for what's to come here. Uh, I don't know oh, what yeah. else to say. That was an incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was an incredible game one, and we're gonna be moving up to tower control on humpback. And Humpback in itself already is a, is a consistently tumultuous map. With what we just saw, I'm expecting only more. Oh yeah, tower control humpback. You know, this is another map where stingrays are really important. You know, especially since it's not tower, um, so it's, it's not splat sends anymore. So we're definitely going to see stingrays coming out. At least one stingray coming out of each team. And if Kakago is willing to bring two stingrays to that splat sends game, we can almost you know bet some money that they're going to bring some to the tower control game. We'll just see if anyone from Team Olive decides to bring a stingray as well. I mean, are you a betting man? Like, I'll take uh, you up on a I'm two buck not. bet. <laughs> oh. I was looking for some free money. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and uh, okay, so Olive only brings one Stingray. Gakagu brings two. Okay, so I was right about part of that. But <laughs> we see um, we see three splash damage weapons from Team Olive. Is that actually a range blaster? Coming I... out of... No, it is. No. Okay, yeah, it is. It isn't vanilla. All right. So that's going to be... Uh, we're going to see some interesting stuff out of that. You know, Inkstorm is a great special on this map. Of course, you know, me playing Zinc on this map basically every time, I'm going to use it as well. As we start out, though, a 2v2 situation basically right off the bat. Torito now the only oh. number left from Kakago, and now it's Olive getting the wipe off the start. Sendu getting the double direct, actually, onto Akatsuki there. And Akatsuki is going to struggle a little bit here at the beginning. Let's see what they can... Inkstorm goes down do to push this one up. Inkstorm is going to go down, making it difficult for Gagaku here to push through the left side here. Or sorry, Akatsuki, as Kirito is going to have his teammate go down to the left of him. Stingray is available for Akatsuki, but in the meantime, two have gone down and they're splitting up. We see Rachel on the right side with no contestion towards the tower. Looks like they should be able to get to the middle of the map and maybe help establish some neutral for them. Probably going to get rid of Urza right here as Urza actually goes for the splashdown. And this tower is still being pressured a lot. You know, this is a, a map that typically it's going to be a little bit hard to get the tower moving because of how difficult it is to get it past that uh, window area. Oh! But because of that white team, Olive was able to get the tower control or get the tower past like the difficulty checkpoint. So this is going to be really difficult for Gakago until they can get the first checkpoint themselves. Yeah, it looks like uh, just a lot of difficulties ha being had here in the middle of the map. And <laughs> I haven't really seen too much of a united offensive effort from uh, Akatsuki here. It looks like they're kind of struggling to get that together. Yeah, yeah, Akatsuki's, they, they've been having a little bit of trouble getting their members together, and it's, it just seems like there's always one person that kind of gets stuck off to the side and uh, taken out by a bunch of Olive members, and then that, that loss of numbers just kind of cascades. Finally, we see Urza going down all the way up in uh, Akatsuki's base, and Rachel's able, able to come over here to the top mid, try to challenge some stuff. It actually takes out Sendow, gets effectively traded with, and now it's a 3v2 situation, so Olive might be, have to stop pushing pretty soon. They might, but I mean, we I see so much green in front of them, it's hard to believe it. Stingray is going to come out to force them off of tower, but the super jumps are going to come back in anyway, and this is an absolute mayhem towards the tower. Rachel might be able to defend it from Urza. Yeah, they will be able to, but the Stingray is going to be able to get them, and it's a consistent back and forth happening between these two teams and their specials. You know, speaking of these teams and their specials, there aren't, there isn't a lot of, uh, 
There aren't a lot of good painting weapons on this comp. I mean, I know that we have the heavy, but the heavy oh, you're really, right. it is infected, so this kind of momentum might actually take a while to shift back in the favor of Akazuki, just because just because their weapons don't really paint that well, so it's going to take a lot of slaying to actually push Olive back, and they haven't really been able to do that yet. Yeah, and Sora, oh, he was about to, okay, he does get the double, almost didn't have enough ink to boot with it, but does get the double to help start this, and really solidify this last second uh, offensive push coming in from Team Olive here. It looks like they should be able to wrap this up relatively solidly, so job well done to Team Olive to be able to respond the way they did, especially after game one. Wasn't looking too hot for them, but you know, able to come out with guns blazing and beyond just winning their individual fights, getting good, consistent map control around the fights that were happening really helped push them to that game two win. Urza going crazy right there with the 13 kills of the Vanilla Blaster, and that's what you kind of expect from a, from a main slayer on a map like this. And yeah, the, Olive took that momentum they had going with, where they started slaying better towards the end of that first game and took it right in to game number two. Now, uh, <laughs> yeah. Port Mackerel Rainmaker, so we're definitely going to see some more Stingrays here. But this is uh, one thing to note about this, this is going to be a big shift in playstyle from the two maps that we saw. Now, obviously, Stingrays are important on the tower control on Humpback, but they're, they're good for a different reason. The Stingrays are good in the tower control maps just because of, obviously, how Stingray can control the pace of the tower moving. Whereas uh, Stingrays on this map are good because it actually just controls the entire pace of the entire map. And usually <laughs> what we see out of teams is they, they have certain comps that they kind of they kind of stick to it's like each player kind of has a small kind of subset of similar weapons that they play and those players will kind of shift around their um you know their personal strengths depending on how the team comp works out so you know we'll go this team comp on this map and this team comp on a different map right. they're really not that different from each other but then you give them port mackerel it's like i'm going to deco you're going to go stingray i'm going to stingray <laughs> i play i don't play an ink jets except for on this map so I, uh, I, it, that also does mean though that uh we, go, we have we run into these situations where the play style of players and the general pace of a match can kind of like be put on hold while we play port mackerel so yeah. we'll see how that turns out no we really will and i mean obviously as you're saying we're kind of really expecting very standard weapons to come out of these two comms, but let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so we got two inkjets and two stingrays on the side of Team Olive. We have two stingrays and no inkjets on the side of Gakagu, so that might end up, I'm um, sorry, Adazuki, so that might end up being uh, a, a little bit of a telltale sign of how this matchup is going to play out. Now, of course, those uh, inkjets are going to be useful. As I say that, the inkjet from Team Ooh. Olive gets taken out, but Team Olive gets another a bunch of other kills, and now they're starting to push the Rainmaker towards court. Yeah, they get it to the 55 point marker. Really not bad for less than 30 seconds in, honestly. Like, that's, you'll take it to the bank. It, is, uh, it looks like Akatsuki will be able to recover pretty quickly there, but still, not a job bad, uh, not a bad job done by Team Olive here. Stingray is going to come out at the same time as the Ink Armor, and we have to wonder what does Akatsuki have? What are they really up to here? It looks like they're kind of thinking and talking it out, wondering how they're going to push up on this, and it looks like their front line might be able to help start that Rainmaker push. They do get the person that might have been able to keep... Right, now they're starting kill. to kill. Yeah, now they're really starting to push this one forward. I see Kirito here on the front line with the... And is able to survive for just a little bit longer. Urza is not... Yeah, Urza's down, and it looks like Pokefine is going to have to retreat. Does go down as well. They get the lead as well. That's a double coming in for Kirito here. Seeing where he should be able to at least get this Rainmaker going as soon as possible. But do they want to rush it? Yeah, they do. They're going to push it to the 24-point marker in just half a second, just like that, and going to back on off. You know, uh, I was about to say, like, the one thing that uh, Adazuki had going for them this ma with this game compared to last game is when... Olive had that initial push last game. It put them in a really good situation where they got the tower past the problem checkpoint, and it really put Adazuki in a really horrible spot. But in this game, you know, Olive only really pushed the Rainmaker to court before it got stopped, and then afterwards, Olive kind of wiped. So it kind of put Adazuki into a fair position to, to go for their own push, and their own push ended up being twice as good as Olive's. Yeah, no, so really just like haphazard pushes happening all of a sudden. Ooh, Soren getting pushed up on in a really bad place in the middle of so much green ink here. Uh, but yeah, as you said, the first push is just really, it just ended up being Akatsuki's was just straight up better than the other, and now we have Urza and Sendi toward, uh, tending towards the right side of the map with the rest of their members, seeing if they can get something going here. The Inkjet might be able to start catapulting this push. Yeah, the Inkjet is one of the key differences. Between oh my goodness! Now, double Stingray, <laughs> reminiscent of a 2015 uh, <laughs> Port Mackerel strat, but it looks like Team Alva is actually going to get stopped there. Those uh, Stingrays didn't seem to get their kills. And everyone except for the Stingray in the back gets up, get taken out from Team Olive, so a really big expenditure of specials after a scrappy situation ends up going in the favor 
up at Azuki, which is a little bit surprising. Right now, we see Rachel kind of pulling up the Rainmaker. We see the Blaster pushing into the court. Uh, members of uh, Azuki starting to push up, but it, it doesn't end up going well for the Rainmaker. It looks like it's going to push back, and now Team Olive's going to have their opportunity to start putting pressure back on Azuki. Yeah, you see the support weapons coming in from Kirito and Serenity. They weren't really with their front line too much, couldn't support that fight happening. Rainmaker maybe jumped the gun a little bit too much, and they end up losing the fight there. Two Sane Rays coming in on the behalf of Olive, able to help get rid of a couple of members to boot with it, and now this push is starting. Stingray is coming in on Stingray, time. Though. They are going to be able to stop this push, but they position the, rain, the Rainmaker in a great spot to start engaging in one-on-ones. Yeah, unfortunately, Soren does get taken out right there, so that it's going to give opportunity for uh, Edizuki to get that Rainmaker out of that hallway. The Rainmaker being in that hallway is a big problem. Now we have uh, Kurito here behind the Rainmaker, kind of putting some pressure on everyone that's trying to, to get in position to move that Rainmaker. And Team Al's having difficulty playing objective right now. A lot of members of Edizuki are in position to get some kills, but the problem is that they're all kind of pushed back. And if this fight keeps going back and forth, it's going to give all another opportunity to put forward. Uh, and Sing as I say, if the Rainmaker gets dropped in that hallway. Singri didn't come just out on time. It might be able to help a push here, but Kirito, Kirito. Kirito comes up clutch. Stays alive for just a second longer and is able to get the push that they really need. But Sendu was able to no! push, continue the push for just a second longer. Nile wasn't able to read the situation as well as he would have liked to. The Stingray is confusing him. Maybe. Either way, Team All gets the last minute lead there with, yeah, a minute left to go in this one. There's only been two pushes of this caliber in this game. So asking for another one to happen last minute while the, the Rainmaker's on the opposite side of the map of what needs to happen is asking for a very big play out of Atazuki. Let's see if they're able to do so. Now they are starting to start to get some mid control. They are starting to fire off Stingrays, but the issue is that Team Olive is going to start having those Stingrays by the time Atazuki gets across the map. And as they start losing members like oh, this, no, it's going to be difficult to even get to that position. Yeah, it's, it's looking rough. I, I don't know what to say. The Stingray was coming up. I mean, and the Inkjet's directly on top of the Rainmaker. You have... Nile here, Kirito, looking for any answers on the left side of the map. Nile, in the meantime, looking for his answers on the right side of the map. Blaster does get a hit marker on Descendu. Nicely, nice job there done by Nile, but he's, he needs to have his teammates follow up as soon as possible. And good job on Nile here to recognize, you know, if we're going to win this game, I need to pave a path for the rest of my teammates. Let's go ahead and get it. Unfortunately for him, though, it looks like Team Olive will be able to clean up with the 1v1s around the Rainmaker, get the wins in this fight alone, and get the wins. <laughs> Finally, just uh, going for a little bit of fun with Sendo at the end of the game, knowing the, the game is over. But yeah, no, that was almost kind of classic Rainmaker, where you get the lead at the beginning of the game, and then you basically spend the rest of the game defending put the uh, pushes from the enemy. That's really not how you're supposed to win Rainmaker. It's a very risky uh, play to go for, because what ends up happening is you give the enemy team a ton of uh, opportunities to push an objective that's probably the fastest moving objective in, in Splatoon as far as like how fast you can score points. So really it, it just came down to the fact that uh, Atazuki needed to keep playing like they needed to go for the knockout. Yeah, no, they really did. And and I, I yeah, I don't disagree at all with the play that was made there towards the end. Like if if they did go forward and like they did up end up like paving a path of pain and was able to get rid of Sendu towards the end and they have the Rainmaker, it, they would have been set. Unfortunately it just didn't pan out the way they wanted it to go. We're going up next to Gobi Arena on Splat Zones, and this is the one map we were talking about before where generally just really fun to watch consistently and uh, looking oh, yeah, forward to this seeing is these a really, players. This is a really, really fun map. Yeah, and and we've seen both teams kind of play both really aggressively, so I'm, I'm actually really pumped to see how, how this plays out on this map in particular. Uh, well, obviously, we're going to see a lot of back and forth. There's going to be a lot of players that are forced to go to mid, and then those players that, go, that are forced to go to mid are going to be forced to fight respawners in a situation where maybe the respawners have a little bit of an advantage. It's very difficult to hold the, the hill, you know, be the king of the hill, as you uh, you might want to think, for very long on this map. So definitely expect a lot of back and forth. And that also means that it's going to be difficult for a team to make a huge comeback if they consistently lose map control just because it'll be very hard for them to uh, kind of keep holding the zone in overtime. So uh, basically kind of keep your eye out on the uh, score as we start to get to the last minute of the game because that's really going to dictate how able each team is to win. Yeah, we'll have our eyes closely peeled on that as we go ahead and get this one underway here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with Urza here in the front lines and does get spotted out immediately. A kind of difficult task here, but they're going to push up 2v2 on the right side. Let's see if they're able to win it. Urza does back off from the 2v2 on the right side, though, because they did spot out maybe Nile here on the left side, but gets directed by him. And they're going to get... Okay, so that situation was weird, but I think it might go in Akutsuki's favor. No, it goes into Team Olo's favor there. 
Yeah, fortunately for uh, Akazuki, Akazuki, there was a, a little issue on the other side of the map where uh, some members didn't really back up far enough from a splash damage weapon and a double kill happened, so any kind of support that would have happened in that situation wasn't going to come. Now, we do see Stingrays going up as Atazuki is able to try to approach the middle of the map, uh, but they, the, the, the bomb rush that they're firing right now really isn't painting zone, and they don't have any members going in with it. A Nile gets taken out. There is a, a splash down in zone, but I don't think it's going to cap it. This might be another wipe for Atazuki. It might be, but that being said, uh, yeah, all of... They're, they've been really giving the pain to them this entirety of the match, and so far, it's been pretty painful to see. We have Nile here on the left side, but Nile, are you going to wait for a teammate to come through? Yup, he's going to wait for his teammates to roll on through with him towards this left side of the map. Can they get results, though? They get towards the zone, they get rid of okay. Zendu, at least for now. Okay. That's two going down, and Pokefan is only the only Pokefan one that's remains. remaining. But, oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, it's a 2v2 in the middle towards Pokefan. They there are able to control, right. finally. But can we talk about the sprinkler and how much damage that did over yeah, the course of that team fight? That sprinkler forced two specials out of Akazuki to take that zone, and it also cost one of them their lives. So this is going to be a lot easier for all to take back the zone. And as I say that, they are taken out. If those members had had <gasps> the splashdowns available, okay. that would have been a different story. But yeah, yeah almost right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he almost used the uh, inflatable, the sponge there to be able to come out on top. Either way, Nile here going to get taken down and out. What was literally a 1v3 and is going to go down, unfortunately. But Akatsuki, they have time. They have a three point penalty. Sure, the yeah. Sting Ink is going to come out, but they have the Stingray to boot with it as well. Kirito is maybe at a loss for words as to what to do. Does have someone super jump back. Uh, and it looks like Rachel's going to be able to uh, at least get a splash on the the zone. But uh, yeah, the sprinkler, they're going to be able to get rid of it, but not of enough teammates on Team Olive. They will be able to force control of zone regardless, though, with the combined use of their specials. Yeah, and that is going to work for now, but they are going to need to get a better lockdown because, like we said, it's going to be really easy for all oh! to get here and start to take out the zone. Splashdown gets shot out of the sky. Uh, bomb rush on zone is going to stop the timer. Adazuki's in a 3v4 situation. Of course, back up. Oh my get God. Down, though. The zone is in the, in the hands of Olive right now. Karito gets taken up by Soren. Rachel running around. She has a stamina to support her, but she's not going to be able to get zone by herself. The, that, that sprinkler, the MVP of Team Olive, is it actually is. Zone right now. It's actually <laughs> insane. <laughs> look at the look at zone of Rachel. She can't do anything. Right Rachel's now. like trying to stay alive in the midst of this stupid. <laughs> This stupid sprinkler is just getting oh, rid of them. Okay. Urza, though, does not shoot the splash out of the sky, and this is going to be control again for Atazuki. So, after what seemed to be a really difficult situation with that sprinkler and everything, uh, Olive's not going to be able to take the zone, and now the timer's starting to take down for Atazuki right now. 2v3. Oh. Stinger going off. Karito finally gets taken out, but how many members of Team Olive are going to be able to do anything about it? Just one. Nile right here trying not to get taken out by Sendow uh, succeeds in doing so, and the timer continues to tick down. No, but the thing is, Nile and Sendu, even though Sendu was able to survive for so long, that gave so oh, much time for Akatsuki to come to zone. That said, Bomb Rush just came out, Baller comes out as well, and Ooh. quick control being taken by Team Olive just like that. But, like, they don't really have too much. Actually, they might have great follow-up. They were able to get a splat on top of the zone. Urza will be able to at least zone out Kirito and Serenity for now, and does pop the Ooh. inkjet, but does get splatted out midair, and now Akatsuki have to come on in. Serenity's trying to shoot the sprinkler, but he gets pushed back. Bomb Rush does get Azuki the zone for now, so this is really good for them. Another splashdown being used. Stingray being used by Pokefan right now. That Another sprinkler, sprinkler. is not it. <laughs> sprinkler taken out, so that's basically game. As Azuki starts to push back in the center of the map, another sprinkler going down for Azuki. They're not that far away from gaining the lead right now. So if they're able to kind of continue this hold and make sure the zone doesn't get taken, which they probably should paint it a little bit so it doesn't get yeah. Uh, the, the bomb rush is not ready yet from Team Olive, but they can put some pressure on uh, Sendow to make sure he doesn't get that bomb rush, but he just gets right now. Okay, so will they be able to paint the zone? Only one oh, but Sendow goes down! Bomb rush goes off. That's good, that's good for Atazuki. This is definitely going that's to be the lead, right now. The yeah. Second of the game, like we talked about, it's going to be very difficult for Team Olive to start winning at the end of this game because of how much the zone is easily uh, changed hands. Soren tried rushing in. He doesn't have the answers. Stingray won't have the answers, but will the bomb rush have it? No, that's not going to be it. And Akatsuki ties it up after what was a really... I mean, frankly, like, unimpressive beginning for them. And they were able to somehow, after a while, after the constant firefights happening in the middle, finally find their way towards that sprinkler and start getting some kills towards Team Olive's end. You know, uh, right now, Akazuki has won both of the Splat Zones maps, so maybe the, the, my inability to pronounce their name properly has a correlation with how much Japanese Splat Zones <laughs> they've been practicing or something <laughs> like that. Uh, it, almost surprisingly, the set goes to 2-2, because after, you know, after basically... The last, you know, quarter of the first Splat Zones map, Olive has basically been dominating. Yeah. And there, there have been, there, there was that one early Rainmaker push from uh, Akazuki on um, Port Mackerel, but aside from that, we didn't really see any signs of life from them. And, you know, you look at the score and it's 2 2, and they have the momentum right now. I, yeah, it, it kind of 
feels almost out of place. Like, I don't, I don't want to say that, but, y you know, the neutral is in all of his favor, but Akatsuki is just... I, I don't know how to describe it. They're, they don't they don't really care for momentum. They just come out clutch when they need to. And so far, it's been doing them well. Let's <laughs> let's see if it uh, let's see if it extends into something like Clan Blitz on Moray. I would argue that Clan Blitz one of the more acceptable versions of this map. But yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of ironic, right? Like everybody kind of hates Moray Towers, and Clan Blitz comes out, and everybody kind of hates Clan Blitz. But apparently, if you uh, negative one times negative one is a positive, number, <laughs> because everybody seems to like Clan Blitz on this map. I mean, but it, it makes sense why because. The thing about Clan Blitz is that um, the, the, the people don't like that. Basically, in order to win at Clan Blitz, you have to control the middle of the map. And once you start to control the middle of the map, you get a bunch of power clans. And because of the super jump mechanics and how the way the specials work, it's very easy to get those clans into the basket, mm -hmm. right? And there's this disassociation between, okay, this is our basket and that's the middle of the map. These two things are far away from each other. It, it, it really, you know what I mean? Like there's kind of dissonance between the objective how you win and the objective where you put it. But the thing about Moray Towers is that the clans and the basket are both in mid. So the area that you have to control to gain points, it's all in the same spot. So it really makes the map a lot more like understandable. Or it makes the game mode a lot more understandable and manageable, I guess I could uh -huh. say. So, you know, you, you're not really ever confused about who's in control because if you're in control of mid, you're control the basket anyway. That indeed, we'll have to see if you know they can they can get that control. That's probably going to be the most essential thing coming out from both teams here, as it looks like Sword's going to be having an early push into their zone here, uh, or to, toward the opposition right now. Akatsuki is struggling with Sword in this one v one. It looks like Sword will be able to get rid of him, and oh, that's three down. They might be able to get a push started now, today. Uh, yeah, putting together uh, the opening push now. They're not. They might not get that many points in. Oh, no, never mind. As I say that, a lot more. Um... A lot more clans are picked up, so this is going to be almost 50 point push. And uh, to be honest, what we saw there was Pokefan getting three kills and or assists in the first uh, 15 seconds or so of the game. And that's going to lead to Olive being able to go for this ridiculously large push. All this map control, Olive knew where all the clans were. They picked uh... them all up. They used that white to push it all the way to 26. Now it looks like they're starting to run low on clans, and Pokefan is doing a good job of slowly putting clams in over time to keep the basket open. And now that all the clams Sadu are thrown in, they're going to start responding more quickly. Uh, Only a few more clams near this base to be thrown in, and Olive's going to gain the lead, but it looks like that's going to be effectively a white for Team Olive. No one's going to be able to throw any more clams, so the basket's going to close. Now it's up to Akazuki to, 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 to do the same to Olive. They're going to need to get map control. They're going to need to wait for those clams to spawn and start building those power clams. But right now, they're starting to die. Olive's starting to sting right now. This is, uh, this is looking kind of rough. This hurts that hurt to just look at like they were in under the goal for at least like what felt like a minute and when you have a full minute to just dedicate towards getting as many clams as you want especially when you have control of the map behind you where there's so many clams it's overwhelming and Akatsuki didn't really great get the start yeah. they really wanted and unfortunately for them they're going to go down very quickly I would almost argue that's game but we all obviously have three minutes left to go in this one yeah, it might come down to being like that Rainmaker situation where you get a lead and you don't do anything with it for five minutes and then you eventually, eventually the, the other team inevitably gets another good push going. Hopefully Ob doesn't succumb to that kind of uh, that kind of fallacy, but a lot of kills going on right now for Team Olive. So now it's a, 3B, a 4v1 situation. Nylee over here kind of in Olive's base trying to do something about it, but even she gets this kill right here, I'm not really sure how much is going to be able to get done from it. Uh, you know, Olive members starting to jump into Adazuki's base. Fortunately for Adazuki, though, some members are responding. Rachel's going to be able to defend it right here. But Olive is not done. They're starting to push up to the base, especially they're even a power clam, and they're putting all this pressure on the enemy basket. Yeah, Sword's pushing with the baller with eight clams, and he's going up the wall, and he's just still single-handedly putting up this effort that is a real annoyance for Akatsuki here. Now Olive will be able to follow up behind him and maybe push up something more. Yep, the football goes into the goal. Still 24 points of penalty worth to wind down on that though. Sandu coming in from the right side, Only maybe able to left. do something, this, but... This thing, right, even if Stinger gets some kills right now, it's not going to really get any more points on the board. So that's a good thing, at least for Adazuki. You know, as long as Karita doesn't die to this thing, right, which he's able to survive. They'll be in a decent spot, but again, they have to get map control. And, and look at the map, it's very blue. You know, you yeah. have to treat this game mode like splat zones in your mid control. You really have to hold mid and just doing so is going to keep the fans push forward. But Adazuki's not doing that right now. Uh, the, the, the map is still basically Olive's they don't really have any clams, and yeah, and now, and now I, I just uh, I just don't really see this being something that's going to lead to Azuki getting the lead anytime soon. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it just feels like Akatsuki is super scattered right now, and I feel like that like the name of the game for Clan Blitz is you know being able to win. Like you could treat it as team deathmatch and get away with it because in doing so you get control of the map and the clams on it. Uh, so so far that hasn't really been 
going too well for Akatsuki here. They're on the left side of the map. They get the splash down at least onto one, another but they're gonna lose the football. The and they just lost another football that wasn't picked up that was dropped in bottom mid. So now Akatsuki's in a position where they just don't have clams again. Now they are the map is starting to look kind of green. There's this thing right going off right now. Unfortunately though, it's matters of Akatsuki go down. It's a three v two situation in the favor of Team Olive, and if Akatsuki isn't oh, able to really get clams yeah. going while they have numbers, you know, I doubt they're gonna be able to get uh, something going while they're down. Yeah, not really the biggest believer in Akatsuki right now, but uh, we we still have uh, 40 solid seconds to go in this one. They can maybe turn it around on a complete 180. We'll have to see here as Urza pressing up towards Akatsuki's goal and uh, so far doing a good job in being able to distract them. Unfortunately, it's still not going to prevent them from getting out the sword here. Splashdown does get maybe a hit mark under Urza, but mm. ooh, that Splashdown is going to be able to take care of one at least from Akatsuki. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, I just feel like Adazuki really doesn't know how to play Clan Blitz, which yeah. isn't the most surprising thing ever. Um, you know, you want to th on one hand, you want to think, oh man, you've had so this m X amount of days to to learn Clan Blitz, but a lot of people, you know, not everybody's that fast of a learner, and not everybody, you know, enjoys Clan Blitz or thinks that it's going to stick around, which uh, you know, I don't, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I don't recommend thinking like that, but. Uh, uh, it's going to cost them this game, whatever it was. That's going to be an easy <laughs> game for Team Olive. Just basically, they, they got the wipe at the beginning of the game. They put a bunch of clams in. I think they only op opened the basket of the enemy once after that. And yeah. Akazuki just wasn't able to get anything going. They they had plenty of opportunities to take the map and pick up all the clams. But they really didn't just go for that paint control, and it, it severely cost them. Give them a Rainmaker. Give them a tower to jump onto. Give them any zone to just cover with ink, and sure, they'll do a good job. But unfortunately, when it comes to throwing footballs, it's... Not in their uh, not in their repertoire to do that. So they're gonna take a loss, go down maybe two to three for now, sure. But things are not looking the worst for them. We're going on to Tower Control Serpent Shipyard, something that's been around in Splatoon 2 for quite a while now. So shouldn't be anything too new for this side here as we get going. Well, this is this is a little bit of a similar. Um, it's a bit of a similar game mode to to what we saw in that first Tower Control game, you know, Tower Control Humpback. Uh, obviously, Sturgeon. There's a lot of differences between Sturgeon and and, and um, Humpback, but I do think that All really is in a good position right now. That they won the last tower control game. Uh, it wasn't that dissimilar of a map, and they they have the momentum right now after that ridiculous win. So I don't really know. Um, I don't really know what Adazuki has to do. I mean, last time, I, I guess both. To, basically, what we've seen at Adazuki is when they are not in the lead and they're kind of desperately they're forced to kind of desperately do something about the objective yeah they seem to scatter and they don't really seem to like group up with the right distance from each other to use specials as a, as a team to get paint control the, uh, it seems like they start to kind of break down when they're under that particular type of pressure and if they um if they go down a, a few times and they're kind of uh trying to, you know, get desperate to, to get to the tower to stop the tower, we might see a, a bit more of the feeding that's kind of cost them in uh in, in games that have that have that, that have played out of that nature in the set so far. So I guess what I'd like to see out of Adazuki is if they do lose the lead and they do need to stop a tower push, that they don't just keep feeding in order to do so, that they recognize that they have to do this as a group and they they put a uh, you know kind of a united effort that gets uh some kills without, you know, going for trades or going in by yourself exactly. or what have you. And that's going to force, you know, force all to stop the push in a clean way as opposed to just everybody going to try to run in and get the, the desperate kill they think they need to win. Yeah, those desperate kills are definitely something. Also, we see our good old friend, the Sprinkler, here on the top of the map. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not Splat Zones or anything like that, but uh, it will be certainly a hindrance to Agatsuki, who was maybe trying to start some push here. For 30 seconds again. Yep, of course. Classic one coming in from Pokefan here, and it looks like they're going to be able to get a nice defensive effort and cover the map completely with purple towards the middle of the map. And now Urza is in a great position to start this push towards the right side of the map, but has to avoid the scenery for a little bit before getting Ink Armor, a 2v1 onto the right side of the map, and this is awful for Rakatsuki. This is just not the greatest yeah, start they wanted. Unfortunately, that was another one of the situations where that counter Stingray did not accompany any teammates to back up. So it, 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 it did prevent the tower from being pushed for a few seconds, and it did kind of push Urza back, but it didn't really result in any kills. And by the time teammates were able to do something about it, they were taken out. Now, unfortunately, Serenity does fall off the map. It's a 
2v3 situation right now, somehow though, as now it's a 2v2, Stingray's going all over the places, Laser's Light Show is going to basically stop the objective from being playable for a few seconds as Rachel gets on as Pokefan Stingray stops, and actually Adazuki ends up taking a, a bit of a lead here, it's not really that much of a lead, you have to see this tower at least get past the first checkpoint, but it seems that Olive now is uh, having a little bit of trouble getting in position, it seems like they're uh, being pushed back, maybe they're just going to group up and uh, attack the tower once it starts moving. Yeah, I mean, we were saying that the start wasn't the greatest for, you know, Akatsuki, but the thing is, despite all that pink coverage, despite the man advantage, exactly. Team Olive didn't do anything with the tower. They weren't on it, so Akatsuki ex exploits that. Sendu gets the double kill to reset it, but, I mean, uh, in terms of who got the better start, it's clear. Akatsuki, despite the fact that they went down early in the game, they are going to be able to take the point lead. Now, Niall here towards the right side of the map here gets the one-on-one -on, -one on Urza. He is duck diving, dipping, and dodging, but will... <laughs> maybe fall down to the hands of that sting right here. It looks like that is indeed the case, and now Soren here on the left side of the map is in a great position to push this front line for Olive. Yeah, Nile unfortunately didn't really have that much of a retreat, retreat path, and once that uh, Stingray started firing to his left, he really was forced to run into enemy lines and end up getting taken out there. Now, Olive is starting to push the tower. There is an ink oh. <coughs> and a Stingray, so that's pretty nice right now. Soren trying to get on tower. Stingray is still putting a lot of pressure over here with uh, the splash damage from Karito near the tower, but Olive manages to stay alive. Uh, 3v... Uh, although they now they start to get taken out. Okay, 1v4 situation. Urza right here is going to try to get a kill. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is a really good situation for Adazuki. They have one Sting right there ready. I'm sure that the other Sting will be ready soon. Uh, as long as people push up, get on tower, start moving this push forward, Adazuki's in a really good position to get some more points on the board. Yeah, they really are. And uh, so far, you know, they looks like tower is going to stay in the middle for now, but Sting Ray on Sting reaction towards the right side of the map. Urza is going to have to dive his way out of that one, or at least super jump his way out of that one to some friendly fire. And now Soren here on the left side of the map. Olive consistently has a gr has had a you know good wall of an offensive you know advancing as a unit trying to approach team fights the most proper way they should but unfortunately even though they were coordinated in that effort they run into three Akatsuki members and go down. All right, and this is back to another three v three situation with not that many points on the board. So the problem that I have for with Akatsuki's lead right now is that it's not very big. And if all of the, you know, I mean, you know, like the classic, oh crap, last 30 seconds, gotta play objective. Oh, we got a bunch of kills, we're gonna win now. That could definitely happen in the favor of Olive against Adazuki right now. With a, mini tw a minute 20 seconds left on the board, it is 3v2 for Olive. Pokefan is on the tower. Urza has special, he's gonna use it now. But Serenity gets a clutch kill on the ta person on tower on Pokefan, so that's gonna put a stop to this team. Olive push now, it's a 2v4 situation. Olive being outnumbered. They are starting to respawn right now, but Azuki's starting to take the map now. This is Olive's opportunity, or uh, this is on Team Olive to really make this push happen last minute right now. And somehow they are in a 4v3. Oh! Oh, but Urza! Urza comes yeah, out with at least a right double all. Oh, will go down, but Tower is nearing that second checkpoint now, and now they so might be able to finally get something going. No so specials available. This is, definitely, this is definitely the end of this push right now. Even if Soren gets this kill on Rachel in the center of the map, it's still going to be looking. Uh, it's still going to be good looks for Adazuki. This is really uh, wasted a lot of potential time. Team Olive has to do something about this. Rachel behind Rachel's. Team Olive. I don't think Olive knows that she's there. And no, Soren knows. Oh. He's going to go for the one on one. Yeah. One -on -one. It's going to be Soren winning the one on one right now. Another member of Adazuki goes down off screen as we're watching that. And now Team Olive is starting to go for Stingray's the. Out, Stingray though. does go down. This is going to start doing damage. Urza and Frio are going to trade. Soren's going to get nicely down. Well, Coco Fane's gonna get on tower, but how is she gonna be able to turn this into a lead? Sandu's the last one. Jumps in, but he's gonna get taken out. And they got the lead! With eight wow. seconds left to go, they were able to force it bit by bit. They recognized the situation against them was looking pretty grim, but they decided, yo, we want to coordinate this, at least uh, touching the tower one by one. We don't have to all be on it. And you saw that exactly. Send you towards the left of the tower, okay. just seeking up on there. Now we have the Stingray pushing up on it. Nobody yeah, in the tower. Out. That's it. Oh, no. That's got to feel horrible as a as a Adazuki member. All these situations, how many matches have we seen? where it was basically a guaranteed win. All someone had to do was stay on tower. Even if they get killed, they'll stop the tower from moving and they'll get the win. And somebody just like hops on tower and it slides the last few points to get the win. Yep. That is going to be, be Team Olive taking a wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was for Team Olive to actually, you know, show the resilience they did. Job well done on their behalf. Uh, for Akatsugi, uh, it, you could feel the turtle coming in. Like you, you knew yeah. uh, the second the second they hit that fifty point mi marker, like I felt like we were just gonna see turtling and holding on for their dear lives for as much as possible, and that yeah. generally doesn't work too great when you're playing as good of players as these are.
and, and if you are going to go for it, you have to make sure that all your decision making is very sound. And unfortunately, they just did not make the decision to have people uh, on and around that tower yeah. to make sure that even if Sendow runs in and gets a kill and jumps on tower, that he either won't be able to move it forward or someone's going to kill him for trying to get on tower immediately afterwards and then jump on it. Didn't happen. Uh, and, you know, Olive's going to move up, but what, 4 2? It's 4 2, right? Yeah, yeah 4 to 2. Yeah, so that's um, yeah, that's that's really difficult for for Adazuki to deal with. They they basically can't drop another game. Uh, they can't drop another game. Yeah. It's going to be Splat Zones though, and they've won every Splat Zone so far in this set. And after the Splat Zones game is done, we are going to be looking at Rainmaker on Kelp Dome and then Clam Blitz on Starfish. Now, uh, Rainmaker they did good in the last Rainmaker game. Honestly, uh, they, they had a little back and forth. It was Clam Blitz that they had trouble with. So what needs to happen is they need to win this, which they kind of um, are expected to. They have to win Rainmaker, which is a toss-up, and then they really need to just improve the way that they approach Clan Blitz now. Because yeah. if they play Clan Blitz in Game Nine the way they did last time, oh it's god, not cool. yeah, it's it's gonna be a, a five-four and a handshake or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, now here approaching on the right side with his teammate Kirito here to get this one started for Gagaku. Trying to spot out any members of the rights of the map does help get a direct onto one Olive member at the very least, but it's not going to do too much for them, as Zone is still not taking care of Serenity on the left side of the map in a 1v1 with Urza. But in the meantime, because of this Force 1v1, Serenity is not going to be able to cover Zone, and Olive will be able to take control of it. Now, uh, nicely job, job well done on Team Olive's behalf, but what can Akatsuki do to fix things up from the right side here? We'll have to see as Nile on the right side is getting having a tough time approaching the middle. Yeah, and that, uh, that sprinkler from Pokefan helping take the zone at the beginning of the map right there. Now we do see a lot of Stingrays going off, kind of laser wars right now. Nile is able to get into the zone. He's not definitely not going to be able to paint anything, especially since he's kind of being taken out, taken out by two members right now. Soren forced the baller, though. Karito jumping oh, in. Oh, no. He... Uh, Nile's still alive. Soren chasing around with his baller. Doesn't get the kill. How are you oh, alive? No. Okay. Karito goes down as well. So this is looking really good for Team Olive right now. They are in position to start taking the zone all the way to the end of the timer as uh, Adazuki's having difficulty pushing in. They're going to have a Stingray, but they don't really have anyone in zone right now to do something about it. Uh, Kirito going to push him from this right side. Needs to win this 1v1 and does versus Zendu. That's Rachel, crucial. But Urza oh, is going to get taken out by Urza. Bomb Rush is going to be top super mid. huge for them. Can they get top mid? Yeah, they do, but not in time. Urza's an absolute madman. Does get rid of two. Will be able to get the third one as well. Possibly no goes down to Serenity, who's right behind them. Oh, Serenity can't t paint the zone right now. Only one member alive. How did this happen? That looked like a great situation for Adazuki to, to, to paint the zone there, and it just wasn't taken out, and, and that Olive's just going to take it. Just like that, Team Olive in a situation where, yeah, sure, they got a great lead, but, you know, Akatsuki, they had something going for them, and, and all that blue in the middle really seemed to signal to us that, yeah, this is going to be an extended game, but no, we're going to get a halted finish to that one as Team Olive takes Game 7 and the set here is, yeah, Akatsuki, uh, they were winning fights when they seemed to need to, but, you know, towards the middle when, when they could have... Started something better. Unfortunately, Urza just came out with two quick, like a double, to really you stop know, things saw, where they started. We saw the problem come out of Azuki that we had seen in earlier games that really got that in trouble, and that was their inability to really put those clutch takebacks back together. Um, the, their takebacks were probably their biggest weakness in that set. Oliva uh, had not even sometimes not even the best hold. They just had you know solid. You know we practiced this before. We don't really have everybody alive, but whatever. We're going to go for this hold holds, and Azuki <laughs> would just kind of. You know, people would run up and die. We saw, um, you know, Rachel kind of running up and splash downing zone before people were there. We saw, like, that bomb rush not being supported with paint and every kills. It was just, they, they just didn't quite have the coordination to really put up a group effort from the back foot to have those map take backs. And since Splatoon 1, you know, since early Splatoon 1, one of the one of the key fundamental skills that a team needs to be a good team is those really calm, coordinated, effective takebacks. And that's just the that was the one flaw that just kept biting Adazuki that whole set was that a lot of times they were down and they weren't able to take back effectively and they kind of fed by mm -hmm. themselves or didn't really coordinate. And you know, that that wound up being the downfall. Really did. Unfortunate for them because there were a lot there were actually moments of brilliance for them. Uh, at oh, least there were a lot of moments of brilliance for them. I mean like they they uh, some of those games were closer um, than you would think, and especially that, that first Rainmaker game, if they had really been able to hold that off, which they almost did, or that tower control game where they, they could have... They 
basically those two games, the Tower Control and the Rainmaker game, where they just lost the lead at the last second by not quite um, defending the objective super yeah. precisely properly, which is a mistake that we see out of you know almost every team. All those kind of like last second uh, losses of the lead when you're playing a good team or neither of you have been able to go for the biggest push. That kind of happens, you know? Mm. Um, so definitely not that they were quite outclassed. It was just that the things that they did have control over, which were those takebacks, that's where their kind of weakness was. And so I think that um, definitely if they're able to kind of uh, to revisit that, that that kind of flaw and make sure that they get those takebacks going in the future, I think that they're they're definitely going to do a lot better than they did here. Yeah. And uh, when they can, you know, step up on Clan Blitz. Obviously, we only got one oh, a peak, yeah, yeah. A peak into one game, but <laughs> that, that was not just a good look. Control, just, just, just paint control in mid is all you need. Just paint control in mid, pick up the clams. Then you can do all the cheesy stuff that people hate. Yeah. Just, you gotta, you gotta get that mid. You gotta get that mid control. You gotta get that paint control. You gotta, you know. I mean, I was saying it before. Like, if you play it like Team Deathmatch, like, you will get control of the paint that has the clams on it. Yeah, and... it, I think that I think that the, the the difficulty that teams have is that like in splat zones, there's a zone. In Rainmaker and Tower Control, you have that right. physical object, and it's like okay, we're gonna control that spot. Um, when you when you're playing Clam Blitz, you need to have paint control of a very large area of the map. Mm. Then you can start controlling clam spawns. Uh, as we've seen from teams recently, you can also start controlling where they where they actually spawn. So you, you start to to get a lot of benefit from controlling the map. The problem is a lot of teams are used to, we're going to control this section of the map because that's where the objective is, and then maybe this other section of the map because that's what we need to do to push. The problem is if you need to control the whole map, a lot of teams don't really know how to do that. And the thing that you say about Team Deathmatch, I think it's a good point because if you look at other games like, you know, Halo, Call of Duty, you know, your kind of arena shooters like Quake, even that have like the team modes, right. those Team Deathmatch game modes, you, you the way that you control the map as a, as a spread out group is different than the way you control the map if you're going for like, you know, you're trying to control the flag and capture the flag or, or mm. something like that. And that is a skill that I think a lot of Splatoon players aren't really that familiar with because the only game modes they play uh, I mean, aside from, you know, the, the occasional Turf War when uh, we have some kind of sponsored tournament that wants us to play Turf War, we really don't control <laughs> the map in that, that, that kind of way. So I think that, that a lot of uh, frustration with Clan Blitz might come from that fundamental um, skill that a lot of us need to learn, which is how to control a map without an objective telling you where to control, and how to um, make that control spread out across the map. And I think that that's something that a lot of us Clan Blitz, a, a lot of us that aren't used to Clan Blitz yet, uh, kind of need to get through to ourselves. Yeah, and it's it's definitely a road, right? Like, and I don't obviously that's a debate. Like, is how to what extent do we want to keep playing this? Do we know if it's going to keep being played? <laughs> I think that in and of itself, the uncertainty of like so many people talking about banning it is like what in and of itself prevents people from being uh, motivated. I mean, we to... had how many times have we had that before in Splatoon history? We had about Rainmaker, then we had about you know uh, Quick Response Stealth Jump. Yeah, and yeah, too many no. bubbles and Krakens. I've seen it before. Um, but uh, give it time. I, um, give it time. Is just yeah, give, my give argument. It time. Yeah. Yeah. Give it time. Um. Yeah. I guess that kind of wraps it up, though. I mean, that that is our coverage for the Transatlantic Splatoon League. If you guys are interested for more information on the league, head on over to transatlanticsplat.com, and you can find information on the teams, standings, etc. And there's even stats there. Uh, we've been posting game by game screenshots in like a private Discord and being able to like can, like set up individual stats, like how each person is playing. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, really yeah. interesting to look at. So head on over to the website to check out more. But uh, I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, Hitzel, it was a pleasure casting with you. Yeah, this was a really fun game. Uh, really fun, really fun set to watch. I love casting with you, Eric. It's always really fun. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, to be back soon. So, uh, and I hope everybody else uh, enjoyed it. I, I think that uh, I think we put on a good show, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, and and just to talk about next time, I would normally say next week Saturday catches then, but of course next week is the U.S. England Open. So definitely look forward to that. Uh, I'm oh, yeah. sure you're probably going to be playing that one yourself, Itzel. Um, I. Can't. I have somewhere to be. My uh, my team. Oh, can. We're gonna no. see exactly how we can do that. Uh, it's it's like a friend's birthday and a, and a bunch of stuff. I can't. I really can't miss out on. Okay. But um, I, I I'm gonna. We'll be doing something. So, <laughs> but uh, and, and at the very least, I'm gonna be sneaking over to my phone to see uh, how everything's going on on the Twitch chat. But, For sure. Uh, yeah, you, you'll definitely be seeing more of me and my team soon. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we might not be back for next week, particularly just because of the tournament next week, but we'll see you in the upcoming weeks. If you want any updates on the schedule for the league, head on over to twitter.com slash 
endgame underscore TV for more. Uh, that, that's us. That's it from us. Words. Uh, I want to go ahead and do my taxes. Thank you guys for joining us, and we're gonna see you guys <laughs> as soon as possible. Thank you guys. Take care. Later, nerds.